quick, I've just got to share with you, since we are going on this journey together as the, the fellowship here at Calvary Chapel Star, of what God's been doing. Uh, for the last six months, give or take, I'm bad at timing, which is why I have uh, this stuff written down. We've been on the casual hunt for land. God, where? Since the foundations of the earth, you have marked out dirt for us to build a church that will glorify your name. Where is it? <laughs> and we've looked at different lands and properties. Uh, we've had it back in May, and then we knew again in the fall we were going to have a land update meeting. We put it on the calendar well before October came along. Uh, and like, well, what if there was no update? Then we would just tell you there's no update. Keep praying. Uh, and so last Sunday's meeting was already on the calendar. That's why this matters. Uh, that you just start stepping, and in God's timing, he starts doing. And we want to share what God's been doing as we've just been kind of uh, riding along. So the land update was set there, and you guys remember October 1st was the kickoff of Abide. Uh, we did not know that was a Sunday. It was like, oh, this is perfect. And so we started committing together as the body of Christ for one month, Bible every day, prayer every day, worship every day, and then once a week fasting. And, and we were fasting and praying and seeking the Lord on all kinds of things. I don't know who all was necessarily pursuing the whole God grant us land thing, uh, but he was listening, or it seems to be that he was. And so on the 12th of October, something interesting happened. Uh, this has happened maybe five or six times before that an area became known to us. We went and walked it. A couple of them were like, this could really work. Um, logically, it made sense. It checked some boxes. But then we found out there were some hurdles or it just, I don't know. It seems like it could work, but it doesn't seem like it's been confirmed by the Lord just yet. Well, on the 12th, we became aware of... Two, land, two properties, and we went and walked them. And one of them in particular was crazy. You remember when Mary's cousin was pregnant, the same time she had Jesus in her belly, and they get together, and it was John the Baptist who was like, whoa, and he just knew the Lord was present. I, I, I cannot tell you, it was so strange walking on the land, and we're in no hurry. We've said no to a lot of things. But walking on this land, was like, oh my gosh, I think God wants this land, whether we want it or not. Uh, this is interesting. So the very next day, right there, as it's been in the orange already, on the 13th, we put in the offer. Like, hey, we offered like 60% of what the asking price was. It wasn't on the market yet. So it was like, yes, this is exactly how it goes. One of those backdoor deals would be so good. And the day we put in the offer, we found out it went on the market that day, and there were three other offers in. I was like, oh, no. And so you jump up to the 17th, I believe, a couple days later. Uh, we've been very busy. But on the 17th, they got back to us and were like, hey, there's three other offers. You're the lowest. Our highest one is the highest cash offer, 1031 exchange, which basically means this will be done, closed in 20 days. We're like, oh, man, but the Lord wants it. <laughs> so I was like, well, we can't be foolish. We need to be good stewards of what God's given us. So let's just offer right around fair market value. We countered, we sent it back, and then they, they called and were like, okay, hold time out. We've got a guy, cash in hand, closed in 20 days, 1031 exchange. You're a church. You're a year old. We know you don't have the money. And we were like, well, you're right. <laughs> you can't lie. You're doing God's work. Come on. And they're like, well, we'll consider it. Um, we'll consider it, and we'll get back to you on the 19th. What was interesting about the 19th is the day we found the land, one thing we know of is that in order to build a church, it has to be zoned appropriately. The city has to give you permissions, where are the utilities and all that kind of stuff. And so on the day we discovered the land, text the mayor, is like, hey, can you get the planning department together? There's land we're looking at. We want to see if you'd even let us buy, build a church here. Why buy dirt only to find out you can't use it? That'd be silly. Well, the same day that they told us, you'll know by the 19th, happened to be the same day we were going to meet with the city and the planning department about a week and a half ago. And so we sit down and like, okay, what, what location is it? We tell them they pull up their city maps and the, all this crazy cool stuff. Like, oh man, this is a perfect place for the church. We're like, we think so too. <laughs> uh, they said one day we'd love to do a coffee shop, bookstore, fellowship area. So it'd be awesome in the winter, a resource to people that need books and want to grow in the Lord and find Bibles and and then they got all more excited than we were. Like, oh, they zoomed out. Look at all the houses that will be around you. People will go in the morning and get coffee and come back and get books and all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, thanks. Um, but we're being outbid, and we don't have the money, and we're going to find out today. And so our mayor was like, hold on a second. Who is it? I'm like, it's a developer. I'm like, oh, dang. 
See, developers have to deal with the bottom line. What are the numbers? Does it make sense? They can't be, you can't pull on their heartstrings. They've got to answer to the bigger organization. He's like, hold on. So he happened to know Mr. Developer, shoots a text while in our meeting. Hey, we, we love this church and think that they should be in that land. That would be cool. Finish the meeting, go home. Two hours later, we get a phone call. Hey, we're going to go with your offer. Like, what? <laughs> but we don't have the money. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. So they, they had a guy, cash in hand, closed in 20 days. They chose a church who doesn't have the money, and they know it. Uh, by God's grace and favor. But the deal was, he could close in 20 days, you have to close in 60 days. I'm like, oh no, that's fast. That's fast. We, we only need to find a couple million dollars in 60 days. That should be no problem. Uh, and they said, and, so close in 60 days, and you have to sign the letter of intent by tonight at 5 p.m. I'm like, hmm, that feels intimidating. So we're at home, it's 5 p.m., this is all happening. I printed it out, I was about to sign it, I was like, oh. The board doesn't know I'm about to sign this piece of paper. They should probably know. They knew we were looking at the land. They knew about the city meeting. They knew about everything. But I was like, they should probably just know we're about to sign. So I shot them a text, partially hoping they'd be like, no, pause, time out. This doesn't make sense. And they were like, go for it. This is our Lord. I'm like, oh, man. So signed it, sent it, and then told them, we need to talk next week. You need to know all the details. You need to know what's going on. We need to either actually be on the same page or you need to shut this down. So we had a meeting on the 25th. Uh, with the board, this is everything that's gone on, this is how the land became available and aware to us, this were the, the obstacles, this is how God solved the problems, uh, and this is what we're looking at, and it's going to be 60 days. And they're like, man, David, this is amazing, and God's moving. The only thing we're going to ask you, his name was Omar, he's the, the most financially wise guy on the board by far, um, and he's like, only thing is you need to ask for an extension on the time. I was like, No. Don't you know this whole thing is because we promised to seal the deal in 60 days? They had cash in hand in 20. I can't go ask them that. But, uh, you, know, that's, you know, when you're a little kid and you're, you're in trouble with your parents, so you don't really say everything in your head? But I'm like, oh, yeah, no problem. Hang up. Oh, no. <laughs> Here it goes. The whole thing. God opened the door and Omar shut it. Look at that. <laughs> Panicking. So what I didn't do is I did not call the land team. I didn't call the seller. I had a meeting because six weeks earlier, someone had called and said, hey, from our old church where we moved from, I was the chair of the building committee and would love to talk to David. All right. Marshall was like, do you want to meet with him? I was like, yes, but not anytime soon. Put it for sometime in the middle of October. Happened to be right after I hung up the phone on the 25th. He walks in. He's my next appointment. Great wisdom, great insight, great connections. It was very interesting, super helpful. And just another indicator that God might be in this. And so from that point, I still knew I was in trouble because I had to ask for an extension and didn't want to. So I didn't, like a little kid. Uh, so the next day, right, we jump on over to the 26th. It was like, Lord, I'm losing faith. And I just, like, I got to go walk and pray. So drove over to the land and started walking across the land. Lord, this is so you you have to do this in spite of me. Please, don't not do this because of me. Bless your people. Exalt your name. Please. And I prayed a lot of things in those 20 minutes I was on the land. The moment I got back and stepped next to the car, my phone rang. And it was Steve. And he's like, hey, he's the one kind of making this conversation happen. He's like, hey, I've been on the phone with the seller for the last 20 minutes. I'm like, that's crazy. I've been on the land with the Lord for the last 20 minutes. <laughs> And he goes, this has never happened in the 20 years I've been doing this. He called me and said he wanted to extend and give us more time. It's like, what? You got to be kidding me. This is crazy. And then I told him, Steve, I was supposed to ask you for more time and was too afraid to. So I'm convinced when we get to heaven, you'll find out the moment my feet hit the dirt. And I said, Lord, please. The phone rang and they started talking. I am convinced of it. And so they extended that time. Uh, we got the PSA or the purchase sale agreement, basically the contract, on basically a week and two days ago on the Friday, sent it to the attorneys to be reviewed, and then we had our land meeting that happened to be scheduled. Imagine that. A couple days later, that'll kind of stay where it is. A couple days later, got the contract back from the attorneys. We made a couple revisions and sent it over. They had one or two slight ones, sent it back. 
Uh, they agreed to give us some extra time. Absolutely wild, crazy, awesome. And so on Friday, even though Satan was living in my printer, uh, printed, the, printed the contract, look, me and the devil don't have a good relationship, and me and technology don't have a good relationship. It's just a hate-hate. That's it. There's no love. Printed out the whole contract. The only page that wouldn't, wouldn't print was the, sign, the signing page. I'm like, come on! Um, so the Lord was kind. I didn't have to break my computer or anything. But there's your land that you're looking at. Uh, the ink is on paper. There is a tiny little piece. So it's the, the big semi-rectangle portion in the middle. The top left part will still be some housing. Uh, but it's 17.2 acres. The, the car's going up and down. That's Highway 16. It is in star. Uh, when the highway is finished in about a year and a month or two, uh, you'll be about four minutes away from here. Just whoop, you're there. So no one's going to be wildly, you know, uh, whatever. I'm losing my words. But it's not going to be inconvenient to get to church once the highway opens. Um, so, so we got the money? Oh, no. <laughs> I never said that. Uh, but one of the guys on the land team was like, you know what? And they've been doing this a long time. I keep waiting for someone smarter than me to tell me don't. And they're like, I, I, the Lord's all over this. I've never seen stuff like this in my life. I'm like, well, that's good. Me neither. And I said, you know, the Bible says that the Lord owns the cattle on a thousand hill, hills. And you're like, yes, he does. And he's like, well, he also owns the hills the cattle are drawn. He's got it all. I'm like, yep, that's true. Uh, so look, Sunday mornings are never going to be a, a finance campaign. It's just not. I've been, been told I should. It can't. Um, it's about the Lord every Sunday. This is what it's going to be about. People have come up and asked, like, tell me when you, when you need. I want to give to this project. Like, it's time. <laughs> if you're waiting for me to tell you, oh, that the clock has started. Uh, if you have this jubilant stirring to give an extra dollar towards this project, praise the Lord, do it. If not, don't. Uh, but we're not going to sit here and talk a ton of money. I know people are just trying to get presents under the tree, um, and it's not always easy, so... That is what the Lord's doing. We'll share an update as it comes along. Uh, pray that he gives us, you know, like three and a half million dollars in the next 60 days. Um, I mean, technically we have 90, but I want him to do it in 60 because that would be awesome. Um, and actually less than that would be even better. Thanksgiving would be fantastic. But just, <laughs> wh why wouldn't he? I mean, he's not broke. <laughs> so anyways. Uh, church, this is what the Lord seems to be doing. I cannot tell you how much it's no one. It's only him. Nothing makes sense. And like, like dominoes falling and the doors being blown off the hinges. Uh, it is just rolling forward. So it's been a blast. Um, definitely got some blisters from hanging on to that plow and not looking back. <laughs> but I don't know about you. Uh, we need Jesus. This morning, I got to tell you, all this stuff going on is awesome, but it's all secondary. Uh, it was so neat. This morning, I get up real early on Sundays and was hanging out with Jesus, and, and we were talking a little bit, and uh, I just had this reminder come up, and this is going to sound so silly to you, but I was getting ready, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm saved. Like, actually, like, I'm not going to be saved. I'm saved. Like, I have been washed clean of all my sins. When the Lord looks at me, it's pure and white like the freshly fallen snow. I am his by adoption. If we get to build a wall one day, praise the Lord, but for sure I get to enter into the gates of heaven. Man, God is good. That deal is sealed. And uh, we can be excited about what God's doing, but may you rejoice in who he is, not just what he does. Okay? He is who we glory in. He is who we're thankful for. Uh, Psalms 70 verse 4 says, Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Not just what he does. Rejoice and be glad in you. And let those who love your salvation say continually, Let God be magnified.